What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So there's a lot of stuff we need to cover in today's video. This is massive. This is stuff that's just coming out and I want to break down what is currently going on. First off, we're going to address a little bit of the infrastructure package in today's video. I want to talk about the fourth stimulus check, where we're at there, what we're potentially hearing, President Biden's wish regarding the eviction moratorium that's coming up in just two days and what the White House says about that. So there's a lot of stuff happening right now, but if you have any questions on any of this stuff, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, thank you guys for watching, and if you could, go ahead, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Now, roughly 42% of Americans believe that President Biden's infrastructure frameworks that he previously mentioned a few months back, okay, those frameworks, they say should be laid out even if there is no bipartisan support. 42% of Americans are saying this. Now, this means that a total of $4.1 trillion would eventually pass through this infrastructure spending. But what I think is very interesting about this, again, and this is just my take, and let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this as well, but more than 60% of Americans believe a fourth stimulus check should be included into the next infrastructure package. There should be some form of stimulus in this. Well, I think this is interesting because the American Jobs Plan, which is that one, it was supposed to be that $1.9 trillion infrastructure package. Well, that's now been dwindled down to about $1.2 trillion, which is effective of only about $550 billion in new funding, well, that package doesn't include a stimulus check. And that other package, which was supposed to be about $2.3 trillion, which now has been ballooned up to one or to $3.5 trillion, well, this one doesn't include a stimulus package or stimulus check in it either. So the American people, over 60%, say yes, we need a fourth stimulus check. And yet 42% of people believe that President Biden's frameworks should be passed even without bipartisan support. So I think that's very interesting that some say we need a stimulus check, okay? Or more say we need a stimulus check, but less say that we need to pass this bill. I think it's very interesting. So we will see what happens, but as of right now, there is no fourth stimulus check being included into that $1.2 trillion bipartisan bill, and most expect it will not happen. My, my guess, my expectation is 100% it will not see any Republican support if there was a stimulus check included or additional relief to the American people. But there's a chance we could see this in the $3.5 trillion package, which as of right now, Senator Sinema says she would not support. Now, there's reports out there that says that she would most likely support something about two to $2.5 trillion. Well, that's a big step down. However, that is roughly in line with what President Biden has said he wanted months ago when he called out for a roughly $2.2 to $2.3 trillion infrastructure package. So that is somewhat in line with where President Biden stands. But again, we will see what happens as we move a little bit closer. What we do know today, and this is where the big news is coming out, massive news, very important, okay? There's a, an eviction moratorium that expires in just two days. On Saturday night, the eviction moratorium will end. There's roughly six million Americans that are currently behind on their rent, and the, motor, the moratorium ends in two days on July 31st. And President Biden says he would like to see Congress pass legislation to extend the eviction moratorium. Because we know right now the CDC cannot do it. We know this. And White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, she had this to say today, and I quote, given the recent spread of Delta variant, including among those American Americans both uh, most likely to face eviction and lacking vaccination, President Biden would have strongly supported a decision by the CDC to further extend the eviction moratorium to protect renters at this moment of heightened vulnerability. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court has made clear that this option is no longer available. Now, the Supreme Court, they upheld this. It was a vote five to four, and they upheld this. However, 
they have stated that this would be the final time. They even have told the CDC that we cannot extend this any longer. If the CDC would like to extend it, if President Biden would like to extend this, an executive order is not going to work. He would actually have to get Congress to pass legislation in order to extend this. Here's the issue. Right now, the problem is that Republicans are not going to go back to the table, go back to the negotiation table and the drawing board and include anything for an eviction moratorium. Republicans have been against this for quite some time. Republicans are in favor of landlords, businesses. They are, yes, in favor of the American people as well. Obviously, it's, you know, we're very important. However, for Republicans, they want to give these tax breaks to the landlords. They want to give additional assistance to the landlords. They want the money to go to the landlords, right? Well, if the rental assistance is coming out so slow, then Republicans at this time, according to reports, are in favor of letting the eviction moratorium expire so that the landlord has the opportunity to go and evict the tenant, get somebody else in there, and keep their business and their property back on track. That's the goal. So we will see. But what we are hearing right now, and again, this isn't great, is that the White House, and this has actually happened for the past few weeks, the White House be has been accepting the fact that the CDC eviction moratorium from the federal level is going to expire at the end of this month. But yet, they wait until today to even make a statement. Even Jen Psaki, she had this to say, and let me know what your thoughts are on this. She said, and I quote, in light of the Supreme Court's ruling, the president calls on Congress to extend the eviction moratorium to protect such vulnerable renters in, and their families without delay. And I think that is very interesting that President Biden wants Congress to pass this legislation without delay. Well, we have two days. We have two days and he wants them to pass this. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. I just don't see it happening. I think it's almost impossible to ask Congress to do this with just two days left when he could have done this last month. He could have done this a couple weeks ago, even earlier this week. Would have been better than waiting until today, Thursday, the middle of the day on Thursday, and then he finally says something. That's a little late. Now, let's get into some COVID news for today. Okay? And I'm going to come back to the eviction moratorium, some other things in just a minute. Regarding COVID, Republican counties are seeing a their uh, COVID spread much faster than in Democratic counties. According to reports, Republican counties are seeing about a 19.5 uh, or about 19.5 cases per 100,000 residents. But in Democratic counties, we are seeing there are about 10.2 cases per 100,000 residents. Now, experts are saying this should not be about party affiliations. This needs to be about science and facts. One expert points to the fact that many people are simply following what their friends and family are doing and what they are saying. However, reports now indicate that about 15% of Americans are going to go get the vaccine, but they're going to do this discreetly so that their friends and family do not find out. Now, I want to bring this up because of one thing. Some people are saying that they cannot be tricked, they cannot be enticed to go and get the vaccine. Yet, the majority of or lately, the kind of the, the uptick that we saw in the COVID vaccine uh, situation was due to the fact that states were offering some type of incentive, reward, win a million dollars to one lucky winner, just go and get the vaccine, right? That's what we kept hearing. Well, now states are considering upping that offer a little bit more making another you know uh, type of lottery to, to some lucky winner and they're considering doing that because according to reports the white house is pushing states to offer more use some of their stimulus funds and offer some type of incentive to increase the vaccination rates because the way we're going right now some experts are saying we will not see a very good winter. We're going to have a very rough winter this fall. Chances are we could potentially see 200,000 new COVID cases in a single day sometime this fall. 
Some experts believe this is gonna happen in the next six weeks, which actually puts us to the big, kind of the middle of September. This is when lawmakers would even come back to Washington. Well, this kind of falls in line with everything else that's currently going on. The eviction moratorium is gonna expire in two days. That's not great. However, some states have actually pushed it back. So that right there is good. But the unemployment benefits from the federal level, those all expire on September 6th. Okay, well we got the, the debt ceiling, we need to uh, do something with that. And according to Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, we need to do this before October 1st. And we have to deal with the government spending bill, which President Biden wants a massive amount of money towards that. And the GOP is saying, well, we're gonna, we're gonna push you back on that, at least according to reports, we're gonna bring that number down and exchange, we're gonna work on this debt ceiling. We're gonna make sure that we can stay funded, right? We can pay our bills. That's what we're hearing. So moving forward, Republicans actually have just as much power as Democrats at this point. The problem here is if Republicans have this much power at this point, when Democrats hold the majority in the House and the Senate and the presidency, the problem here is Democrats are gonna have a tough time getting anything passed. So one of the things that is so massive about what's going on right now is the simple fact that Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, if they do not get on board with what Democrats want, they're ultimately giving all the power to Republicans. And at this point, if Republicans have the power, a stimulus check, no matter whether it's $400, $600, $2,000 or $10,000, it's not gonna pass. Okay, the other thing is the Medicare, child, you know, child care, elder care. There's a bunch of other things in the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package, which is the American Families Plan going to families, right? Which means that child tax credit, that's potentially going to get extended. Possibly two years, but they're pushing for four. Okay, the reason I say possibly two years is because some lawmakers are saying that they really don't support this for four more years but they would support it for a shorter time frame. That's why I'm saying two years is most likely. Now, one thing I just wanna address, and this is something I've been seeing over the past, uh, probably the past you know, eight hours or so, the IRS came out today and stated that they are sending out roughly $1,600 checks, okay? Stimulus checks. Well, these payments are actually payments for people that have uh, received unemployment benefits. But the average amount is about six, I think it's about $1,610 or something like that. It's a little bit over 1,600 bucks. Well, news outlets, many YouTubers, people on TikTok and social media, everybody's coming out and saying, new $1,600 stimulus checks. Well, technically that's true. These are new, these are technically stimulus checks, and they are $1,600. But really, it's not a new check it's not a new check, it's the same check that you should have received before, but you paid an overpayment to the IRS. So they're just sending you the money back. That's all it is, okay? So I, I know I'm gonna get more questions on this. I got questions from my video this morning as well about this new $1,600 stimulus checks and why I didn't address it. I didn't address it because it's not technically a new check, okay? These are just checks the IRS is sending out, all right? So it's the same reason why, you know, I, I read uh, a comment, uh, I think it was a few days ago, where one of the community members actually received their, their uh, tax refund and they got about 16, or they, not $1,600, about $16,000 back for, from their family. And so, uh, great, that's, that's a huge amount of money, you definitely overpaid, but that's one of the same reasons why I don't come out and say, oh, new $1,600, new $16,000 check because it's only gonna affect a certain amount of people and it's one of those things that the money was already coming out. So uh, if you have any questions on that, please, you can ask your questions down in the comment section below. I just wanted to clear that up because I know we we're getting a lot of uh, you know, misinformation about that. So if you have any questions whatsoever, you can ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, just wanna thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing. Make sure you subscribe so that I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on and I'll see you guys on the next one.